Okay, so today we're going to look at the sole reason why you shouldn't be signing into Windows with a Microsoft account. Stick around, all the details coming up shortly. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. So as I say today, we're going to be looking at the sole reason why you shouldn't be signing into Windows with a Microsoft account. Now, let me get this clear. I'm not saying you shouldn't have a Microsoft account. I'm just saying that you shouldn't be signing into your computer with a Microsoft account. Now, there are many reasons that a lot of people are going to bring up to why you should or shouldn't sign in. I mean, one of the benefits to it is, is when you do sign in, it backs up your settings in Windows. So it means if your computer crashes, is you re-sign in again and uh, it brings all of your settings back and also I believe some Microsoft Store apps as well but not all Microsoft Store apps it brings back not all apps itself apps that you've downloaded from websites it won't bring back and it may not save all settings but it saves certain settings in Windows it saves your desktop and bits and bobs like that some of your layouts it also signs you into Microsoft services such as OneDrive Skype Edge if you've got Office, it signs you into Office if you use Skype it signs you automatically into Skype so it it is quite handy from that respect. Also, if you've got Windows 10 or 11 Professional and you've encrypted your drive using BitLocker, apparently it stores the BitLocker key on your Microsoft account as well if you log in with that, although some people have had trouble recovering that from their Microsoft account anyway. So I would always recommend keeping a separate copy either on paper or on a backup hard drive of your encryption key just in case you do need it. Also, a lot of people, there's a lot of arguments about what data Microsoft records if you've got a Microsoft account. Well, it really depends on what services you use to be quite honest with you. If you purchase anything from Microsoft and you've allowed them to save your credit or debit card details, then they've obviously got them. They may well have your address your date of birth, nothing really out of the ordinary, nothing different from any other service really. They may also record your browsing habits and the way that you use the computer. They may also record some diagnostic data, some advertising data, but they, they record that anyway if you've got a local account, depending on how you've set your privacy settings in Windows. I do have some videos on setting your privacy settings in Windows, which may help if you're worried about that. Have a look through my channel. But my main issue that I do tend to see quite often with signing in with a Microsoft account is if for instance, you forget your password. Like for instance, when you sign, when you select that you want to sign in with a Microsoft account, it often will ask you to set up a PIN, which is different from your Microsoft account password. Now, at times you might have to sign in with your Microsoft account. And of course, because you use your PIN day in, day out, it could well be that you've forgotten your Microsoft password. If you forget your PIN, then you might well need your Microsoft password to be able to recover your PIN number. Now, you might be thinking that, OK, well, if I've forgotten my PIN and I've forgotten my Microsoft password, then what's the big deal? All I need to do is just to reset the password or get an email sent to uh, the email address that I've got registered with Microsoft. Well, I've had a few people recently that have perhaps not updated their recovery methods. They've not updated Microsoft with their mobile phone number because in the beginning when Microsoft set up these accounts, you could use your home phone number. But Microsoft stopped that a few years ago and will no longer call you on your landline, they'll just try and send you a text message to it. And not all landlines will accept text messages or SMS messages. Um, it could well be that the email address that you've got as a recovery email address might be well out of date and you don't have access to that email address any longer. So what do you do then? Well, then you end up filling out a recovery form, an account recovery form with Microsoft, giving them all the information you can think of that they ask you for. But usually what you find is within a couple of minutes, you just get an automated email come back saying basically, sorry, you've not given us enough information 
please try again. And then if you're lucky, you then get an email come back saying that it's been sent for manual review. We'll get back to you within 24 hours. And if you're really lucky, they'll get back to you. But in most cases, I've found that they don't get back to you within 24 hours and you have to start the whole process again. You can't speak to anyone at Microsoft or if you do manage to speak to someone at Microsoft, all they say is we take security very seriously and we're unable to help you on this occasion. So you're then locked out of your own Microsoft account and you're locked out of your PC. So what should you do if you've just bought a new PC and you want to set it up without having to log into a Microsoft account? Well, I've got a video on this. It should be up on the screen right now if you want to go to it, which shows you how to set up a PC from scratch without signing in with a Microsoft account. Or if you can't see a link to it on the screen right now, then have a look in the description down below. I'll put a link down there for it too. Now, what about if you've already got your PC set up and it's attached to a Microsoft account? Well, as long as you haven't forgotten your login details, as long as you can get back into it, then I'm going to show you how you can switch back to a local account in Windows 11. Incidentally, if you do want to know how to do this in Windows 10, then let me know in the comments down below and perhaps I'll do a video on that. So click on the start button just down at the bottom of the screen. And then once you've clicked on that, go up to settings, just up there, click on that. Once you're in settings, go across to the left there and over to accounts, click on that. Then you want to scroll down to your info and then click on that. And before we go any further, I should say that this isn't going to stop you from signing into Microsoft services. You can sign into things like OneDrive if you need to manually. You can sign into Office if you've got Microsoft Office. That isn't a problem. You can sign into Skype. You can sign into Edge and get that to sync. You can pick and choose what services you want Microsoft to sign into instead of having them sign into absolutely everything. So once you've got to this page, then all you need to do is click on sign in with a local account instead, just over there on the right. So left click once. And here it just gives us a warning. It says, are you sure you want to switch to a local account? Windows work works better when you sign in with Microsoft. Switching to a local account means you won't see your personalized settings on all your devices, and you might be asked to sign in again if you want to access info associated with your account. If you still want to continue, go to the next step to verify your identity. So click on next, type in your PIN number or your Microsoft password, depending on what it asks for. And then it asks us to give a username here. Now it's automatically pre-filled one out. If you're happy with the username it's given you, then leave it. If not, change it. Now here we can set a password if we want to, or if we don't want a password on a machine, then we don't have to. If we don't want a password, then we can just leave new password, confirm password and password hint blank. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to click on next. And then here we go. It's just got here, sign out and finish. So I'm going to click on sign out and finish. And what it's going to do is it's going to sign us out. And then when we sign back in again, because I never set a password, it's not going to ask for one. Like I say, that is purely optional. You can set a password if you want. So click sign in and there you go. It's signing in. Didn't ask me for any password. And there we go. We've signed in. And as you can see here, if I say, for instance, go into OneDrive, I click in OneDrive, I'm still signed in to OneDrive, I, but I've got the option there. I can sign out if I want to. If I go into Microsoft Edge, it's still actually syncing in Microsoft Edge. So that is still set up, even though I'm logging in with a local account. So if I click on the head and shoulders there, as you can see, there you go. It says the sync is still on. So there you go. If you've got any comments about this video, please leave them in the comments down below. I hope you like this video and if you did, consider hitting that thanks button and making a donation to this channel or have a look in the description down below. You can have a look through my Amazon shop if you're looking for a VPN, Fire TV stick, Fire TV cube or Fire Stick accessories. We've got some great links down there for you. Buying, subscribing and donating really does help support this channel. It helps me to be able to spend more time researching to bring you these great videos. And whilst you're at my YouTube channel, why not stick around? I've got thousands of other videos for you right here, right now, covering all sorts of subjects. Hopefully whilst you're here, you're going to find something to 
to educate you, entertain you, amuse you, and maybe even save you some time and money. And if you do see any videos whilst you're here that you think your friends, your family, or your work colleagues might like to see, then please don't forget to share these on your social media timelines. If you want to check me out on X, formerly known as Twitter, you can catch me at CWTEK, or if you want to have a look at my website, it's CWTEK.co.uk. Thanks for watching and speak to you again soon.